Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to build our first antenna. It's a very simple setup, very easy to find parts for. We're going to do it right here, right now on Ham Radio for non-techies. Again, I want to welcome you guys back to Ham Radio for non-techies. And as I said, today we're going to be building a two meter quarter wave ground plane antenna. But first, I want to give a couple shout outs here. Um, I got a bunch of new subscribers. I want to thank you all for supporting my channel. I really, really appreciate that. And a special shout out to Tank Radio for helping me get into the YouTube ham radio community, along with the other guys that are in there that have great, great channels. Uh, check out Tank Radio. Also, you know, check out Ham Radio 2.0 and go check out Josh's channel over there, Ham Radio Crash Course, if you have not already. Okay, so we're going to build this antenna. This is going to be a simple antenna. This is something, it's not, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, the one be-all, end-all of antennas here. It's, be, it's just to show you a very simple way you can build an antenna without having to source a whole lot of items and, and product. So with that, let's pop over to my desktop, and I'm going to show you what we got to have here. Okay, so let me get my mic out of the way here, guys. There we go. So if we're going to build a two meter quarter wave ground plane antenna, the uh, formula for calculating the length of our elements, normally if you're doing like a half wave antenna, uh, you would be uh, using a 468 divided by the megahertz you want to build the antenna elements for, and that gives you your length. But since we're doing quarter wave, we're going to cut that in half. So for quarter wave, we'll use 234 divided by the megahertz we want the antenna to tune to, and that'll give us our length. So in this case, I want to go with 146 because that's a that's the channel I use a lot in my uh, local ham radio stuff, my club. So 234 divided by 146 equals 1 1.6. That gives us our length. But we need that length in inches. So now we need to multiply 1.60 by 12. And that gives us 19.2 inches for each element. And that'll be for all five elements in the antenna. And if you look over here at my uh, really sad little rendition of an antenna here it's going to look something like this you'll have your five elements the four down here and you'll have the one up on top with your so239 connector you'll run your cable through this pvc pipe and down into your radio so the supplies you're going to need for this first off i went over to walmart and i tried other places but apparently it's really hard if you have a dry cleaner nearby maybe try to go that route you want to pick up five coat hangers just regular coat hangers. These are coated, so you're gonna have to get your wire strippers and strip off some of this. But I'll show you that in the shop. There's your wire. Your uh, what's going to be your elements. You can also use copper wire. I just didn't want to for something to be disposable like this. I didn't want to waste any really good copper wire, especially at the price of copper wire right now. But if you have some solid core copper wire, you're welcome to use that. You want around you know 12, 14 gauge. Uh, you don't want it overly thick. You don't want it really, really thin where it's flimsy and can't do anything. So the coat hangers were a perfect or perfect thickness for this project for me. Uh, you'll need ring terminal connectors, and that would be these. I picked those up over at Home Depot for about a buck seventy-five. So you want to get a pack of those for you. The next thing will be an SO239 connector. Now I've got a place in town here that carries some radio stuff and things like that. So I was able to pick up one of these little SO239 connectors, which is the exact one, if you're going to do this project, that you'll need to complete the project. Make sure you get the one that's actually uh, chassis-mounted SO239. The next one's going to be uh, bolts and nuts. Again, went back over to Home Depot because I was stupid and didn't forget, and forgot to go there and get it all in one shot. But I picked up some number 6 by 32 half-inch nuts, or bolts, and some number 6 by 32 matching nuts. These are about, I don't know, buck 75, two bucks a pop. So getting this, we're still not very expensive here with our supply list. And of course, we have our PVC pipe, which they do have some pre-cut sections in Home Depot. This is like the thing though, $250, maybe $3. So it was not that expensive. Uh, that should cover everything there except for the coax cable. Make sure you have a coax cable with PL259 connectors. If, you have, if you're going to be trying to connect this into your HT, you might need to get, if your cable, your coax has PL259s on both ends, obviously one will go into this, this connector, 
But if you can try to run this thing through your HT, you're going to figure out what connector that has for your antenna and get an adapter that goes from PL259 to either SMA or BNC, whatever you've got going on, so you can actually use this. Okay, so as far as tools go, the tools, you know, again, this is going to help you out a lot. You're, if you're going to get into ham radio, you're most likely down the road going to have some need for these tools. But the uh, first setup is wire strippers. Just a simple set of wire strippers. I got these again over at, I got on a Home Depot or maybe Lowe's. Not that expensive, 10, 12 bucks. Uh, your next thing is be wire crimpers. And there's different types out there. I've got a set of these. I got a new set coming in the mail because I got I want something a little bit nicer. But I've had these for years. They're fantastic. Just something you want that has the round things in here so that it'll crimp these connectors. So set of those is essential. The next thing is be wire snips, of course. I've got a nice set of dikes here, and they're really good. A lot of times, though, if you do get um, if you do buy wire strippers, they will come with a wire snipper built into them. But I did not want to I didn't want to trash the blade on this cutting the uh, uh, hangers apart. So these are really heavy duty. You can cut through all kinds of stuff. I had these for a long time. Just any cheap ones you can find. You can go to Harbor Freight if you want to. You're only going to use them for a couple little things here. And lastly, I've got lineman's pliers. And this is only to help straighten out. And this is more of an OCD thing. It's not a necessary thing. It's more of an OCD thing for me because I want my, my, my elements to be as straight as possible. So if you can find a set of lineman's, lineman's pliers, and you'll find other uses for them down the road for things uh, as you go along. But these are great to have. They are a little bit pricey, so if you don't need them or don't have to have them, you want to just kind of bend the wire on your own, just stick with that. Don't go crazy with it. And, of course, you'll need a soldering iron and solder. So that pretty much covers everything we're going to need to get this going. So let's jump down, get into the shop. I'll show you how to assemble all this stuff. Like I said, it's super simple. We'll get it built. We'll bring it out. We'll throw it on the antenna analyzer, see what kind of SWR we're getting. Then we'll plug it into uh, one of my radios and see what happens. So with that, guys, I'll see you in the shop. So hey, guys, welcome to my shop. We're going to go ahead and get started with this build. So we're going to start taking our hangers and converting them into the five elements we need to build our antenna. So like I said, you'll grab a pair of wire snips or some dikes. And what I found was easiest was to cut it right up here, like so. And then we'll bend it out. This is where that lineman tool comes in that I was telling you about. You get that one little hard bend right there. So I'm just going to try to get that, get that bent nicely. So at least it's as straight as it can be. We go a little bit further into here. Okay, get that up. Like I said, this is more of an OCD thing. You don't have to make it perfectly straight. It's still going to work either way. But now we've got a good stretch of wire. I know I need 19.2 inches. So I'll use my ruler down here, and we will find 19.2 inches. So we'll get that set up. And 19.2 is about 19 and a quarter. I'm going to go just a hair below 19 and a quarter, which is 19.25. So I'm going to mark it and get that ready. I think right there will be our money shot. Done. Got element one of five. So now we'll move on. I'll go ahead and cut the other four, and we'll go from there. So now that you have all five of your elements cut, the next thing is going to be do is strip off a little bit of uh, the casing on here. If your wire hangers have a coating, or if you're using any kind of a wire, if you have wire, try to strip it all off so you have just a nice bare copper. Uh, but if you're not doing that, if you're going the cheaper route like I am here and going with the coated wire hangers, you want to get that coating off. So with my trusty little wire snips here, I believe it is considered to be 12 gauge. So by doing that, it pops it right off. Okay? Just like so. So we'll go ahead and get that done. That way you have all five of your wires here are already set up and stripped. 
Now, some of these I stripped off a little too much. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. It mainly just has to fit inside of the uh, connectors that we've got, and that should get you going and, and keep you rolling. So next we'll grab our connectors, and we'll grab our crimps. We're gonna get these out. Go ahead and get five of these little beggars here. There we go, get those out of the way. So what I usually do, I'll put the connector into the crimper. You just gotta find the right, right hole for it there. Make sure you can see the top. Now when I do this, I'm gonna try to get that in the camera here. Make sure that You're going to the top where, the, where the, the, the crimper has a little bit of a uh, connector to it or like a separation. You want the top part that's going to crimp right onto that. So I'll put that in there. We'll drop our element in there just until it comes out. And we'll squeeze that down nice and tight. I like to go down a little bit more. Get that second piece. And there. That's it. We're golden. It's not coming off. Not going anywhere, we're ready to go. Do this five times and we'll come back and see you in a second. Okay, quick edit. Don't do this to all five. You're only gonna do it to the first, the first four because these are gonna be the actual elements coming off of the SO239 connector. The top element, your radiating element, is gonna actually fit in the top of the connector and we're gonna solder that piece into the actual connector. So don't put one of these little uh, eyelets onto this last piece, only do it on the first four. So with that done, we're now ready to go ahead and get the soldering portion of this over with. There's only one part you gotta solder, and that's gonna be getting your SO239 and getting this in there. Now, the gauge of wire that I'm using on here for the hangers was a little bit thick, and it just kind of barely went into that little hole there. So I went over to my sander, and I sanded it down just a little bit just a very little bit so I get a little bit of play and it kind of fits into the connector like you see there. And that's what we want. want so this is gonna stand up like so when we have the uh, antenna finally mounted. So we're gonna solder this part into here and get that going. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and solder the connection for the first element or the, the, the radiating element into the SO239 connector. So I've got my overly exuberant uh, soldering station here. So we're gonna pop in here, and what I did is I put a little bit of flux on the end of the uh, element here. I'm gonna stick that in the connector, then we'll grab our iron, and we'll let that heat up and hopefully get some solder on this thing without any problems. Make sure we get that all around. Just try to do your best to get it sealed up there. Just like so. And I think, hopefully, maybe, perhaps, we're good. Now, if you guys are interested in getting this soldering station, I mean, it's overkill for a lot of things, but it has everything. It's got the heat shrink gun. It does, uh, it does your voltage, has DC, you know, DC power voltage regulators, all kinds of little things you can test stuff with. It's really overkill for what we do in ham radio, uh, but if you want to get one, I think I paid like 80 bucks for it on, on uh, eBay. It is the 853D is the model. Uh, I do not know who the actual maker is, but I took a chance on it, got it, loved it. It's, it's been a fantastic uh, tool for me. Okay, so let's get this thing off here and see if we have successfully. So if you look there, nice and close. Got a decent solder on there. It's not my best soldering job, but you know what? It's not going anywhere, and it'll, it'll work for what we're trying to do here. So that is how we get that soldered on. So the next part is going to be connecting our connectors, or our, uh, our elements, to the four holes that are in the SO239 connector. So we'll jump onto that part next. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to be setting up our elements and attaching them to the SO239 connector. So that's where those little nuts and bolts come in. So all you do is you put, put one in there, like so. We'll attach our connector, and we'll drop our nut on top. 
you know, we just have to get that nice and tight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pair of pliers here. You can use any kind of pliers you have available. I'm going to grab the ones that I've got and trying to keep it at an angle here. Use my screwdriver. We're going to get that assembled nice and tight. So you'll have this out. Make sure you, like I said, try to try to keep the uh, try to keep them straight from the corners out. We'll do four of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that finished up, and we'll come back. Okay, so we've set up our five elements. Got our top element here. Our four elements coming out. The next thing you want to do is you want to bend these down at about 45 degrees. Really easy to do with these connectors, like so. So that is our antenna. Now, just for purposes of keeping this video short, um, you're going to connect your your uh, your connect your coax here. You run that through this three quarter inch PVC pipe up into here and screw it in, and that will be your antenna. Really simple product or really simple project. So what we're going to do next, we're hook up the uh, coax to it. We'll hook it into my antenna analyzer, see what the SWR is. Then we'll connect it to one of my radios and give it a shot and see if we can reach anybody. So that's next. All right, guys. So here is our finished antenna. And I made a little stand. I took another piece of PVC and I cut a hole with a Forstner bit right in here to feed the cable through. So you can see here, that cable's going up through the PVC that way and goes right up here to the top of our connector where it's now plugged into our homemade Frankenstein antenna. So now we'll take this outside, we'll hook up to the uh, SWR meter and figure if it's ready to go, then we'll plug it in and check it out. By the way, if you guys are interested in getting into antennas and making antennas, want to learn more about antenna theory, I highly recommend this book, Practical Antenna Handbook by George Hipsley, Hip, 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 Hipsley, whatever, I can't pronounce his name, and uh, Joseph Carr. Uh, they are on sale at the time of this recording on Amazon. I think I paid like $45, maybe $48 for it. This has every single thing you could ever want to build, and it gives you the theory behind it, how to do it, uh, it shows you, you know, what you're going to need to build build these different items. It's just a really, really good, thorough book. So if you if you think you're going to be getting into building antennas, grab a copy of this book if you don't have it already. Uh, you'll thank me later. But anyway, we'll see you guys out in the field, and let's get this thing hooked up to the uh, meter and see what our what our readings are. All right, guys. So we got our antenna set up here. I've got it rigged into my Rig Expert AA600. So go ahead and turn this on. And we'll do a scan for SWR. Hit OK. All right, so it looks like we're about 1.25, 1.3. We'll go back and check. Uh, we'll hit Show SWR this time. Hit start. Yeah. So for 146.940, we're running about 1.3 SWR. I think that's within acceptable modes for this. So we're good to go. We will get this thing hooked up to the radio next and fire it up and see if we can reach somebody. All right, guys. So we've reached the end of this thing. We've built the antenna. We checked out the SWR on it, found it was really surprisingly low for being something made out of hangers from Walmart, right? I got it mounted up in my truck here just temporarily so we can kind of see what's going on. So let's pop on the radio here and see if we can get a signal check. This is KI5MPL. Can I get a signal check, please? MPL, this is Whiskey One Whiskey Hotel, Oscar, and I'm reading you 5 by 9 Awesome, thank you very much. Just built an antenna using uh, hangers from Walmart and wanted to test it out for my uh, my show. Least expensive and working.
Racing is always very good. <laughs> I agree 100%. Well, thank you for the uh, signal report. This is uh, KI5 MPL. I'll be clearing your final. Question. Go ahead, question. Go ahead, question. KD5PQJ, I was just going to ask, did you make it a half wave or a quarter wave? It's actually a quarter wave ground plane antenna. That's cool. <laughs> if you need a little more strength to get up to the full dipo, there, there's a good article uh, from the UK that uh, shows you how to build it out of two coat hangers. <laughs> well, I'll definitely go check that out. Yeah, this is just a uh, test to see. I'm kind of showing my viewers uh, what you can do, you know, for the new hams out there and how you can build something for less than, you know, 10, 15 bucks and see if it works. And we've proven that theory, so I appreciate it. Yeah, when I saw how simple it was, taking a piece of 58 coax that was cut in half and uh, one 10 black connect screw, screw to screw, flip through, and two coat hangers, that was the simplest and cheapest, not having to uh, go hunt down a, uh, uh, what you want to say, uh, RJ50, uh, or fat. What, 520 foot line or whatever it is, uh, quarter wave connector. Have <laughs> 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 fun with your building, KD5 PQJ. Well, I appreciate everything there. Thank you very much. KI5 MPL clear. So there you have it, guys. We've proven our theory. You know, I know to the, uh, the more experienced hams out there, you can see if you knew Morse code, you know exactly what that just said. Uh, turn us off here. Yep. Turn it off. Anyway, uh, I know to, to the more experienced hams out there that have been doing this for a while, like, oh yeah, guy built the antenna out of hangers. We've seen it. But you know, this is my very first uh, attempt. Well, actually, that's actually my second attempt. It's my first attempt at building an antenna and actually plugging it into a nice radio without frying the thing. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good haul. All right, well, let's... Uh, Go back into my shop for final thoughts. So guys, we did it. We uh, built an antenna out of a $2 package of uh, wire hangers, a couple of nuts and bolts, an SO239 connector, and some PVC. And I, think, I think the whole uh, cost, the entire thing for me was about 15 bucks, maybe a little less, actually probably a lot less. Uh, but you know, it just kind of shows you what you can do in ham radio. And you saw, you know, the, the signal was clear. The guy said he got me five by nine, so I got a really good signal off this. And, uh, you know, we didn't have it really high up. I just had it on top of my truck. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That'll help the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio. And if you like this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking on the little bell so you can be notified whenever I do a new video. Uh, for now, guys, this is Ham Radio for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL. And I'll be clear.